Is the very idea of disability based on biased assumptions? Today we're talking about a revolutionary idea about the way we think about disability called the social model of disability. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Psy vs. Psy, your favorite channel for all things psychology. Now, there's a like button hidden somewhere below this video. Today's challenge is to find it and click it. Less than 1% of the population can do it. Can you? While you're working on that, let's talk about the social model of disability. Before we get into the main topic, I wanted to let you know about a serious neurodevelopmental disorder that almost nobody has heard of, but it touches almost all of our lives. It's called NTSD. Now, NTSD is a spectrum disorder, meaning it presents in many different ways. It has strong genetic components and significantly affects brain morphology. During early brain development, the brain grows more slowly and produces 40% fewer neurons. Then in early childhood, the brain starts trimming away a lot of the connections between the neurons in a process called synaptic pruning, which results ultimately in a much less interconnected brain. The amygdala, a structure involved in emotional and reward processing, is shrunken. As you can imagine, these physiological changes in the brain result in some deficits in behavior as well. Individuals with NTSD tend to have social abnormalities as evidenced by excessive eye contact and extreme codependence in their social affiliations. They may be overly emotional and have difficulties with basic logic and problem solving. A tendency to hyper-focus on social norms and rules that interfere with basic decision making. When communicating, many of those suffering with NTSD will prefer to convey information non-verbally through gestures and exaggerated facial expressions rather than verbally. Social difficulties aside, they also have trouble maintaining deep interests in their hobbies and they cannot stick to basic daily routines. Many people with NTSD experience blunted sensory sensitivity across some or all of the senses. At least half exhibit lower than average IQ scores and one in 10 NTSD patients are diagnosed with an accompanying learning disability. Now comes the really scary part. It's so widespread that it affects up to 98% of the population. You heard me right, 98%. And the vast majority go through adulthood undiagnosed. There is some hope, this number is rapidly declining down from 99.9% .9 in the year 2000. Because of its serious implications for how people function in the world, I wanted to raise awareness of those suffering with neurotypical spectrum disorder and for the challenges faced by their caregivers and families. Given advances in prenatal genetic screening and gene therapies, perhaps someday we will be able to cure this debilitating disease. Okay, so I made all of that up, but for good reason. I wanted to show how the words we use to medicalize and pathologize symptoms of disorders can make a big difference. In fact, all of the things I said about NTSD are true relative to autistic spectrum disorder. Fewer neurons, a less interconnected brain, more emphasis on facial expressions, less adherence to routines. So my description might be the kind of thing you might read in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, if it were written by autistic individuals. It's only because of the standards we have set socially that the autistic phenotype is viewed as abnormal or in need of treatment. Today's main theme is a revolutionary idea in how we think about disorders and disability called the social model of disability. The social model of disability suggests that it is society that imposes a disability on people rather than their impairment. Disabilities are only defined as such because they don't match a certain standard or are not accommodated in the society in which they exist. For example, if everyone was left-handed, the right-handed individual would be the one who can't find usable scissors. If everyone were a person of short stature, then the world would be built differently such that NBA players would be severely disabled. And if the world were run by autistic people, all those issues I listed for NTSD might be considered pathological problems in need of curing. Contrast this with the medical model 
or individual model of disability in which the person with the impairment is disabled and the emphasis is really on treating or curing the impairment. The social model of disability recognizes that what we call deficits or pathology or disordered is relative to a standard, but embedded within those standards is a value judgment. Who makes the determination of what constitutes appropriate eye contact? Who determines what is normal and acceptable? And what difference does it really make if someone deviates from these norms? By structuring the world in a certain way, society can be alienating or excluding people with differences or impairments, causing the disability when there need not be any. Fundamentally, it calls for social change to build a better society that can better serve all people regardless of their differences. In a 2006 book chapter, Tom Shakespeare describes three important features of the social model of disability. First, it separates the disability from the impairment. An impairment can be overcome if appropriate accommodations are made, in which case it ceases to be a disability. Disability implies that you are not able to do something, but with proper accommodations, that might not be a problem. For example, both eyeglasses and braille allowed people with impaired vision to read. While being nearsighted, for example, would have been a problem before spectacles were invented, now it's ordinary to see people wearing corrective lenses. This means disability is linked to the culture and time period in which you live. Second, instead of focusing on cures or rehabilitation, the social model looks to help remove barriers and oppression faced by disabled individuals. Examples include passing laws to prevent discrimination and finding solutions to help people work and live independently. By being more accepting and accommodating, we can capitalize on the unique talents of all individuals. After all, the world needs all kinds of minds. Third, the social model highlights that disabled people are an oppressed group and that disability rights is a civil rights issue. Charities and medical or mental health professionals may be well-meaning, but they may even exacerbate the oppression that disabled people experience through perpetuating stigmatizing language or stereotypes, focusing on cures rather than acceptance and accommodation, medicalization of the problem, and so on. The phrase, nothing about us without us, highlights how important it is to lift the voices of disabled people who can advocate for their needs through self-advocacy organizations and research. Now, this doesn't mean that medical treatments for disorders should be completely abandoned. The reality is working at both the individual and social levels can provide benefit to disabled individuals. But the social model is an important reframing of the problem that highlights how disabilities are defined and how they can be accommodated. Maybe we can shift away from language that casts differences in a negative light, such as people suffering from NTSD or excessive eye contact. Maybe we can say more or less than typical instead. I think most of us can recognize the importance of accommodation and acceptance of people despite their differences. Diversity is a beautiful and valuable thing, and neurodiversity is no exception. I think the average person agrees that having wheelchair ramps and reserved parking spaces are good ideas. We have a long way to go towards increasing accessibility for many marginalized individuals, especially those with differences of the brain and behavior. The best thing you can do is educate yourself on the challenges that people face and think of ways that we can change the world to be more inclusive of everyone. If you want to know more about how psychologists think about disorders, check out our video on what is a disorder. If you liked this video, click the like button. Subscribe to get more videos like this one. And until next time, keep thinking. <laughs> it's crazy to think about what the world would be like if autistic people had a huge influence on the future of humanity and the planet. <laughs>